In this video, I'm going to be experimenting with adding mica powder to 3D printing resin. Mica powder is a very finely ground and tinted glitter, and this can be added to your resin to give your 3D prints a unique shimmering effect and an extra layer of depth. In this video, I'm going to be using the longer brand standard photopolymer resin in white. It's a pretty standard resin, and it gives us a nice base to build off of. Before adding any of the mica powder, we're going to print a model just using the resin with no mica powder. This will be our control sample so we can see how much of an impact adding the mica powder has on the finished product. I'm using a model from Loot Studios. This one's called the Ancient Statue, and it's a nice wide flat model that gives us a lot of XY detail. So here we can see this model looks about what you'd expect printed out with just a white resin. And overall, I'm pretty happy with the way it looks. So. Now that we've printed this model, I want to completely empty the vat and clean it out before adding the mica powder. This way, the mica powder is evenly distributed throughout the print. So before adding any, the first thing we're going to do is completely clean the vat. Once the vat's been cleaned and reset, we're going to make a batch of resin mixed with mica powder. I used a pretty unscientific approach to this method. I basically filled a cup with resin and then added mica powder until I felt like I'd added too much. I don't have a magnetic stirrer, which is really helpful for getting a consistent mix, so I'm just going to be using a popsicle stick and stirring the powder into the resin until it looks pretty consistent. Once we've gotten rid of all the clumps that are floating around, we have a nice even mix. It's time to go ahead and pour this into the vat of the Mars 2 Pro. One of the first things I noticed was how much the resin looked like it had been tinted as opposed to having an additive suspended in it. It looks like this really even, consistent, sort of baby blue color, and you don't really see any powder or particulate floating around. It just looks very consistently blue. It wasn't until the build platform started to raise that I could really see some of the glitter, and it became clear that this sparkly sort of effect was not going to be as dramatic as I thought it was going to be. So here's a finished product, and it's definitely glittery. You can see it sort of sparkling. I had to pull up the contrast a little bit to get the highlights out, but you can definitely see some sparkly material in there. And it's interesting that it's darker in certain areas. So you can see kind of under the nose is a little bit darker, but generally speaking, it just looks like it's been tinted. So compared to the original white print here, it doesn't really look like it has this additive in it. It just looks like I've tinted the resin blue. I wasn't really expecting this, but then again, I'm not sure what I was expecting. So after the print had finished, I did notice a lot of the mica powder settled onto the bottom of the vat, so I had to stir it up a little bit, and this looked cool. I was really hoping to achieve a tie-dye or swirl effect, so I added some of this high contrast pink to a little bit of white resin and mixed it until we got kind of a bright pink color. So the thought process here is I'm going to add this in small lines as opposed to just filling the vat. I figured the build platform would act as a plunger and it would push down and create kind of a swirl with this material. It became pretty clear that it was just mixing it, so I added a little bit more as it was printing, but I was really surprised. This plunger action was just mixing the resin together, so it was mixing the blue and pink and there was no real clear line of separation between the two different colors. So while it was printing I noticed the vat of resin turned more of a gray color and it looks really sparkly, so it picked up a ton of the mica powder in the print and you can see it's a lot more glittery than our first print, but it's also noticeable there's a really big color difference. The model on the left is just the blue mica powder and the model on the right is the blue and pink and it turned kind of a gray color. There was no marbling or swirling or anything like that which was the effect I was hoping to achieve so I figured I would try one more thing before I called it quits and that was dumping silver mica powder into one side of the build vat. So the idea here is if I can make one side much darker than the other I think that we should get a model that is lighter on one side and darker on the other. This was kind of risky, I was worried about some of the clumps puncturing the FEP vat but generally speaking it looked like it was working fine. You can kind of see the right side it's a lot lighter and the left side you can see all of those swirls. Unfortunately, on the finished model, this isn't really as readily apparent. You'll see the clear line of separation and you can see where there's more of that silver content, and on the bottom of the model you can even see some of that marbling effect I had really hoped to achieve, but it doesn't go up very far, so I'm thinking this might only really work for short flat models. Kind of interesting though, the results weren't what I was expecting and it was still a lot of fun to play around with. 
I had a couple of big takeaways from this experiment, mostly that the mica powder settles, so every print I had to stir it pretty vigorously to get it off the bottom. It's also pretty clear that using an opaque resin and mica powder will just tint the resin as opposed to adding an inclusion. And finally, if you tint two resins and mix them together, they don't really have a clear barrier, they just sort of blend together. Still a really fun project and I'm looking forward to trying this again using a clear resin. As always, thanks for watching and have fun printing.